So, yeah, good morning, everyone. Yeah, today, I'm going to talk about other thermal and electrical properties. So, I will not uh, deal with every thermal and electrical property. I just focus on the thing what which you have to know in iTrend before measuring your materials property if you make a new ones. So, this time is yeah, thermal and electrical property. So today we are focused on TGA, TSC, and four, four point plug and LED measurement. So next week uh, I'm ending this class with cell and TM, maybe and the other things will be presented by best. So uh, to understand the thermal analysis, yeah, you know the concept. So actually thermal analysis includes every method or measuring the sample property while the sample temperature is program controlled. What does it mean? So every thermal analysis, they increase or decrease temperature. And then during that, uh, during that controllable temperature, what happened to the material? So basic concept is that you have a computer to control the temperature and then detection, detection unit. So you have this furnace. Furnace means uh, make some heat and then induce induce the heat to the sample and then during the detection unit you can measure the sample's temperature okay so while this uh, computing programming maybe let's say one to two degree and then this program can order to this machine furnace machine and the furnace machine they can increase temperature and then another proof that can detect the temperature of this sample. So we have detector. And then when the sample temperature was delivered to the, this data processing part in the computer, so in the, in the feedback, they can control the temperature. So this is how they do normally. Yeah. So you should remember one computer, they try to control and then they can get feedback and then from this control and feedback they can determine how much of temperature will be applied for the sample through this furnace okay the detection unit is uh, furnace sample and reference folder and sensor heat and cool the sample in the furnace state of sample temperature and property so in this uh, detector machine uh, Temperature, as well as other properties you want to evaluate, they can measure. Temperature control unit, control temperature, furnace temperature. Data, record, data recording unit, record the signals of sensor and sample temperature and anal analyze them. So they are ongoing analyze. So this combination of detection unit, temperature control unit, and the data processing, you can see every single thermal analysis device. So this is the basic structure of the thermal analysis machine. And then uh, we have a bunch of thermal analysis machines called DTA, DSG, TG, TMA, DMA. There are many things to do. But anyhow, all of these machines, depending on the increase of temperature, what will be changed? You have to see. So what from the base on the what? Let's say uh, DSC. Differential scanning calorimetry. Calorimetry refers to the entropy, so they can evaluate entropy of the material. And then this TG, also, also this thermal gravity, gravimetry analysis is also called TGA or TG. So TG, depending on the temperature, mass, weight of the material will be determined. So they can convert it as a gram. And then this is joule per second. And then DTA, uh, differential thermal analysis. When you change the temperature, they measure the temperature change difference from between reference and your material. So DTA also can be measured. And TMA, when you increase the temperature, some material deformation can occur, like length change, length enlargement, length shrink. Yeah, anything can be, that can be occurred. And then DMA, dy dy dynamic mechanical analysis, elasticity. 
Yes, so converted to Pascal. So some of the machine, uh, they can measure at the same time TGA, TSC, or TSC, DTA, or TMA, DMA, something like. So there are many combinations you, uh, you can contact. But today, we are only focused on this TSC and TGA. Because other things you can easily know if you know these two concepts. Actually, in this TMA, DMA, just you imagine, if you increase the temperature, or you, you already know the instrument. So you have instrument, but if you hit the instrument machine, what will occur to the material? Yeah, that can be uh, measured by the TMA or DMA. OK. So TSC is a basic, basic thermal analysis machine. So you can know the melting temperature, glass transition point, crystallization temperature, and the reaction, curing, and polymerization, uh, which occur, and sub submalation, evaporation, dehydration, thermal decomposition, and thermal history and specific capacity. Yeah, measurement object. You can measure this kind of thing from the basic and uh, from the DSC. And the TGA, uh, TGA they can only measure the weight. So from the weight change, you can approximately know the curing or polymerization when occur. And then evaporation, dehydration, and the thermal decomposition. Actually, for the TGA, thermal decomposition is a major parameter you have you can determine. Okay? And TMA, DMA, almost similar. Yeah, something you can measure, but this is very indirect way. Yeah, because they Actually, direct or indirect, we cannot say exactly, but this is some DMA, one you imagine, uh, elasticity, TMA, some deformation. So if you know the concept of the glass transition, maybe some deform, some material can deform. And then that deformation can be detected by TMA or DMA, because during this glass transition, some elasticity can change. So if you look at this DMA, TMA, TGA, DSC, you just consider DMA, elasticity, TMA, deformation, yeah, shrink or enlargement, TGA, weight change, TSC, entropy, or some energy change. Okay, You should know the concept. And then let's say you, you can make own your biomaterial, and then you want to know the melting temperature. What can be the best choice? And then maybe based on this table, melting temperature should be checked by TSC. This is uh, optimal condition. But also you can measure this melting temperature through TMA or DMA. But in that case, uh, maybe it's not occurred that much. So TSC can be golden standard. Based on the concept of the melting temperature, melting temperature during this process, maybe some entropy change. So this is the basic concept. And because of this entropy change, some uh, deformation or elasticity change can occur. But this is some another consequent factor. So, so this is a uh, DSC. Mm. For the DSC, differential scanning calorimetry, you need reference and then sample. Because they should know the reference. So in this furnace, also, they can generate heat, and then this ref uh, from the change between referenced and sample, they know how much of energy can be obtained into the sample, or how much energy can be produced from the sample. This is a little bit complicated anyhow. The basic concept is the same as before. So heat, maybe this is computer, temperature control, uh, and the thermal couple, they can measure the some temperature. Another thermal couple, yeah, th this can measure some individual temperature of a sample and reference. Absolutely, this has hill register. So, and then this amplifier, and then also temperature recording or temperature difference or heat flux, heat influx recording. Okay, so, yes? Hmm? What kind of reference do you have? You mean? Uh, this kind of 
Yeah, actually they have candidate of reference material. So each company they provide their own reference. And then maybe in the software, there are maybe five or six reference. And then maybe maybe you have one, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe the company already provide the reference material to you. So you just give the operator sample and then maybe they have already their own reference. Because uh, the company should know the what kind of thermal behavior can be detected from the reference and then they already record everything in the machine. So, so I will show you the candidate of the reference material later. So this is DSC. Yes. Yeah, so in the same, in the same, more compact schematic images, sample and reference material, and then they change. They can measure the change between them. So let's say over time you change the temperature, right? And then something happened during this time. From the voltage, and this voltage is correlate the temperature. So let's say this green one is reference signal. Reference signal, maybe we just collect the reference material, which will not change over the over temperature change. Over time, this uh, green one have this very linear slope. But somehow, the sample signal they linear, and then they maintain, and then go up like this. So something happening here, okay? So what 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 can be happened? So let's say this is some pol polymer powder, and then which means which means that even though you pro you transduce the heat in the same furnace to the reference and sample, reference according to the heat they can increase their heat, their temperature linearly, but somehow. Sample, suddenly after T1, they stop to increase temperature. So we can imagine the melting can start. Because during this melting process, the sample should uptake the temperature, and then this uptake energy can be transferred to the state change from the solid to liquid. Yeah. You know, as the solid to liquid, liquid to air, they need energy. So even though, in other words, even though this furnace can produce the energy to reference or sample material, this energy 100% to tra transduce the reference material and then they, their temperature increase. But in case of sample, even though they can provide this 100% energy, but maybe 80% is used for increasing temperature, but 20% is used for changing their transition phase. So this is of their meaning. And then from this T uh, sample minus T reference, and then you can get this kind of graph. Okay? So this is called endothermic melting process. Okay? So this area, this area can be plot like this. And then we can call endothermic. What is endothermic? Endothermic means observed energy. In the opposite word, it exothermic means produced energy. So let's say if you decrease the temperature from the high to low, maybe the liquid polymer can be changed to solid polymer. In that case, maybe this red signal can be high like this. And then this graph is going down. So this is called exothermic. This is endothermic. Okay? So from the change of this area, you can calculate this much calculate, and then they can know yeah, this uh, transition entropy. They can calculate it as a gram. Because always you have to put the sample as a gram, like 10 milligram or 20 milligram like that. And then this energy joule can be calculated from this temperature change. So we know the melting starting point and melting ending point. Okay. Calories. Oh, uh, I will not go detail, but uh, maybe based on this temperature change between two, 
yeah, they can calculate. Yeah, maybe they have their own some formula, but I didn't know detail. So yeah, for understanding this graph, maybe you should know some term. But let's say just without this term, this is a over increase of temperature. You can know the heat flow. So this heat flow, or heat flow is some kind of another term of the, this TC voltage or temperature or heat flow. You can convert it anytime. But depending on this y-axis, maybe some graph that can be inverted. Yeah. So in this time, heat flow. So this time, they can use the y-axis as a TC voltage or as a temperature change of the sample and reference. But this is the inverted version, heat flow. So heat flow, may you can imagine this is some <coughs> yeah, heat from the sample. Let's say this temperature, over the temperature, the material have some same heat flow, and then somehow they are go below like this. And then somehow they can go up, and then they can go down. So this is some basic a phenomenon when you use some polymer to evaluate this DSC. So what will occur? So let's try to understand the glass transition. Glass transition meaning that the glass liquid transition or a glass transition is a gradual and reversible transition in armor porous material. From a hard and relatively brittle glassy state into viscose or rubbery, rubbery state as the temperature is increased. So which we can say that we can call it TG point. So in I turn from that moment, I say TG point is a transgradation point. Okay? What occurred? Partially movement of the carbon or partially movement over certain molecule. Something changed physically from the heart to a little bit soft. Well, from the heart to little viscosity. Hard means that uh, the, the molecular, they cannot change their formation easily. They stick together. But when the temperature increases, somehow the material can flow. Okay, So this is called TG softening. So we, which is why we can call it softening. Okay, Partial movement of carbon. And then during this softening, absolutely some yeah, thermal behavior change. So, uh, from before this uh, melting point and transitional point, you are contact. You are contacting this TG point, and then what occurs? Crystallization. Crystallization is partial alignment of the molecular change. If the molecule they can uptake more energy, they can a little bit change their motion. This is called uh, TG point softening, and then. If you if they have more energy, they can have their own alignment. Okay. So this can occur many uh, metal. Uh, when you have some metal, let's say cobalt chrome metal composition, cobalt chrome sometimes they can unevenly position in metal form, form. But when you increase the temperature, the cobalt cobalt chrome they can rearrange themselves to have their own crystal. So crystallization, you can see the clear appearance to the cloud appearance. There is increase of opacity. So clear means you transparent. You can see the other the other point through this uh, white material, clear material. But somehow the material can be invisible. This is cloudy. So crystallization is meaning molecular chain partial alignment. And then when the heat flow go down like this, there is a rear melting temperature. And then maybe if you go up more temperature, what will happen? Another go down peak, right? This is some, how can I say? Guessing, guessing temperature. Yeah, something like. But in guessing temperature, this machine, they are losing the weight of the sample, so they cannot accurately measure the guessing temperature. 
for that you need another machine. And, and then you can see that the midpoint can be used as a TG. Also this peak point and this peak point. But they have onset and end set. Onset and set, onset and set. This onset and set, you can point out or the software that can automatically point out. Okay, and this is the example. Uh, I use PTFP, PET. PET is uh, most commonly used polymer as uh, so your recyclable water bottle. So let's say this is a glass condition and then cold crystallization, melting point. So onset of this onset is uh, glass clean glass transition. Maybe this <coughs> rectangular is onset midpoint. Maybe this this one, and then heating rate. So you should uh, determine how how much speed you can induce the heat. This is what well, 10 degree per one minute. Okay. So this midpoint. Or maybe uh, depending on some certain standard, ASTM and Richardson, maybe they have their own protocol. So based on these two different standards, they can measure 80 as a TG point or 71 as a TG point. Okay. And then this another del delta CP you can gather from this point. And then let's see this uh, melting curve. Melting curve peak is 248. So you can say this is some melting temperature. So as you know, if you know the melting temperature, the material cannot be melted 100% in this melting temperature. Okay? As you can see, they start to melt before, like 220, and then ending melting, 260. So if you have 60 degree melting temperature polyurethane as a body polymer, but you want to yield gas sterilization, but you yield gas, they can hit around 40 or 45. So somehow they can be degraded, they can be melted during the yield gas temperature change. Okay? So that is why uh, you have to consider this point. If you think about the melting temperature, always below and higher, the melting can occur. So if you 100% melt some material, over the melting temperature, you should increase temperature. Okay. And then from this area, they can measure the energy as an entropy, as a joule. Okay. So uh, as an example, yeah, let's say uh, this is some polyethylene sample as a receipt. And then in here, they want to know some crystallinity of this material. So what is the crystallinity? So to understand the degree of crystallinity for a polymer is uh, important as a crystallinity affects physical property, storage modulus, other things with the temperature. So also polymer they have crystallinity. So sometimes you want to know their crystallinity because crystallinity they can refer to their own mechanical or permeable so mechanical physical property that can link to the this crystallinity of your material. While most of these materials have crystallinity can be determined, the direct measurement of degree DC provide a functional fundamental property from which this other physical property can be predicted. So DSC measure heat flow into or out of material as a function of the time and temperature. Polymer crystallinity can be determined with DSC by quantifying the heat associated with melting of the polymer. This heat is recorded as a percent crystallinity by normalizing the observed heat of fusion to that of the 100% crystallinity sample of the same polymer. As accepting sample of 100% crystallinity polymer are rare, so literature values are often used for this value. So
So for example, so they want to know their crystallity of this polymer, and in that case, you have a reference crystallity of this polyethylene material. So if you put some other nanoparticle, other thing is polyethylene, some crystallity can change, and from this crystallity change, you can refer, uh, predict this physical or mechanical property of your sample. The figure one shows that melting endosome, endosome means that, uptakes uh, energy for one of the polyethylene samples during the initial and received heating. So software is used to calculate percent crystallity based on 293 gram joule per gram for the 100% crystallity material. Okay, so you have three samples, so melting onset, melting peak, and then from this graph, they can determine the enthalpy, right? This, this enthalpy, they can be divided by this 100% crystallity, and then you know the crystallity on this material. Okay, so which means that if this material uh, have 100% crystallity, maybe this graph is like more area because more crystallity more hard to melt down okay but because this uh, polyethylene they have less crystallity compared to 100 percent crystallity polyethylene so we can get like this so maybe if you add certain nanoparticle in some germa or other material maybe this kind of crystallity you can measure as a supporting data. So you know the material mechanical strengths or mechanical modulus, but you want to add some other things. And then you can do this TGA as a supportive data. And this is another example. So let's say you have PMMA, this uh, well-known biomaterial used in orthopedic or dental as a replacement of certain um, big bone sometimes. This PMMA have this kind of behavior like this. And if you add certain uh, nanoparticle, like nanoparticle here, something happened. So let's this is MNA. Okay, you can see the YouTube. DSC sample preparation. Mettler Toledo has crucibles for every so need. This is the video how you prepare the sample. But actually, this preparation sample is performed by the operator because we normally yeah, just deliver the sample to the operator in link center and they will measure. Today, we will show DSC sample preparation. We will use the aluminum standard 40 microliter and the aluminum 100 microliter crucible. Samples will be a powder and a liquid suspension. For DSC sample preparation, you need a micro balance placed on a stone table, the crucible box with crucibles, a crucible sealing press, a lab journal, and of course, the samples. DSC measurements are carried out with a reference and a sample crucible, each with a lid. In order to achieve good measurement results, the crucible and lid combination's weight on the sample and the reference side should not differ more than 0.2 milligrams. Let's start with the preparation of a powder sample. In order to allow the atmosphere above the sample to expand, the lids are pierced. The different number of holes make the sample and reference easier to distinguish. Pierce the ref reference lid with two holes. And the sample lid with one hole by placing them on the eraser and using the standard needle from the crucible box. 
Place the crucible and lid on the balance and tear. Place the funnel contained in the crucible box on the crucible and fill in about 10 milligrams of powder with the spatula. The funnel makes sure that no sample is spilt on the rim of the crucible. Remove the funnel. Close the weighing compartment and let the balance stabilize. Read the weight displayed on the balance terminal and note it down in your laboratory journal. If the balance is connected to the PC, the weight can be directly transferred to the experiment window of the Star TA software with the push of a button. Close the crucible using the crucible press. Place the crucible on the die of the press. Apply the crucible lid, center it, and rotate the lever to move the plunger down until its resistance is overcome. The lid is now cold welded to the crucible rim. For preparation of liquids in 100 microliter aluminum crucibles, we use lids as received to hermetically seal the crucible. In order to prevent reaction of the crucible with water, the crucible and lids can be stored in a desiccator with a wet atmosphere overnight. The aluminum surfaces then will be passivated. After tearing, fill in the liquid, such as an aqueous suspension, into the crucible using a syringe. Do not fill it more than halfway to avoid problems with thermal expansion. The sample will evaporate as long as the crucible is open, so one should work quickly. Hold well the lid to the crucible and check the weight gain. Leave it on the balance for some time. The crucible is tight if the weight does not decrease by more than 20 micrograms within 5 minutes. Write down the weight in the laboratory journal. Such so a correct- you can imagine why they do this kind of punching. So during this heat generator, maybe the we do not we do not want to some losing our sample. So sometimes if you deliver the sample to the machine, when you have some powder, the powder just can be flow away. So we just make some kind of how can I say very solid container using this uh, below crucial and then upper crucial. Okay. And then you know they make some punch. From the punch, maybe they can change. They can be evaporated. Yeah. They can meet some oxygen or nitrogen. So yeah, anyhow, this is uh, how they make this kind of uh, sample for DSC. So let's say uh, this is material method. T thermal analysis perform glass transition temperature TG using this pumpkin machine. Sample with a mass of 10 to 50 milligram, heated to 190 degree at a rate of 10 degree per minute. The temperature maintained for one minute and let's cool down to 30 degree. And this is the result. So blank PMMA, blank PMMA, TG point is 82. DSC curve. And the TG is estimated from the midpoint of the heat capacity peak. This, this, and middle, right? In case of organic and inorganic nanocomposites like PMMA, BNNT, 85, it will increase. What does it mean? In case of the mobility of the polymer chain is significantly affected by the confinement and strength of polymer surface interaction. Okay, mobility of the polymer chain is referring to the trans transition, uh, gra transition temperature, right? The meaning of the TG is the mobility increase in polymer. Okay, so this mobility can lead to this strength of polymer surface and the confinement. So this applies to the interaction between this inorganic material and organic PMM chain. The chain which are in contact with uh, this nanoparticle would exhibit slower dynamic than those with the polymer matrix, which means that in case of increase of TG point, maybe some more strong contact between this nanoparticle and PMMA, we can expect. Actually, even in the absence of the particular favorable interaction, the contact with the hard surface would tend to increase the local segment density profile. Anyhow, this PNNT cannot chemical contact with the PMMA, but when from the physical contact, they can delay the TG point. They won't say like that. And this in turn leads to increase of the configuration entropy and thus the increase of TG looks reasonable. Okay. So just if you add this this data, maybe as supportive, you can know the some behavior of your material. So what is why we focus on TG? Actually, the normally melting temperature of the biomaterial is always over 100 or 200. But what can occur? 
in the body. Tg point is less than vector temperature. So let's say your polymer have 60 degree vector temperature, like a ruby, or oh, what kind of ruby? Gang so? A ruby? A ruby? A gold, gold. What kind of polymer do you have? Do you use for 3D printing? At the moment, PCL. What is the melting temperature of PCL? Melting temperature. Melting temperature. Six hundred? Sixty. Let's say sixty. So you have to increase the temperature of your 3D printer over 60, right? Yeah. Maybe 70, something like. When you increase just 60, they cannot melt 100%. Always, you should increase temperature around 60, 65. And then, let's say, but when you implant this material, PCL, in the body, the body, normally, they cannot generate the heat temperature over 60. Anyhow, their temperature is around 37, right? But somehow, if you have a fever, if you have an immune response, the temperature increase around 40 or 45. In that case, the material can move to the transition point, TG point, and then the material can flow, which means the material can deform. That is why the TG point is very important. So if you add some material and then decrease the TG, which means that somehow your material can be, can be deformed in your body when they are uh, when they are positioned in some high summer environment. So high summer environment also if you drill some bone drill or if you cut using some laser cutting machine during the surgery also temperature can increase. So let's say you are, you are implanting your material and then you cut your drill this material to contact the bone or to remove some kind of blood vessel surrounding your material, the heat from the, this, your laser point or heat from the drilling that can damage your material. Okay? So that is why biometric scientists want to know the TG point. But normally, if you add the nanoparticle or other things, TG point is increased. But somehow they decrease is some you should mention. Okay, yeah, it's the same concept, TGA. TGA what? Thermal gravity, gravi, gravitometer analysis, right? So you simply imagine gravity, weight. So they have balance, and then you put some sample as a milligram, 10 milligram, and then over the increase of temperature, the weight change and balance change. So what can be applied to know the filler content of your polymer? Because the filler, always silica or some inorganic particle, so they not melted over 60 or 700 degree. But polymer, most of the polymer that can be melted, uh, that can be evaporated, melted and evaporated you know, within 1,000 degree or 600 degree. <laughs> Residual solvent. Solvent, when they are entrapped in sample, you cannot measure the residual solvent, but if you increase temperature, solvent is evaporated, right? And then the weight change. So you know the residual solvent. Residual monomer in resin composite, where residual unreacted polymer in gel mark. Okay? Amal. You can know the residual solvent. And the carbon black content, the decomposition temperature. When this sample are decomposed, moisture content. Let's say if you have a gel, hydrogel, you put it here. And then you know the how much of the moisture are obtained in the gel. The plasticizer content, or the plasticizer that can evaporate first before the polymer evaporation. 
oxidative stability. If you uh, change this environment as uh, oxygen, you can know oxidative stability. Performance of stabilizers and low molecular weight monomer in polymer. Because low molecular weight, they can evaporate for at best. This is some their TGA conventional lizard. Over temperature, you have maybe four different content in your biomaterial. Depending on their mm, guessing temperature, this change. Okay? So compared to the DSC, DSC they accurately measure the melting temperature. But TGA, this sample should be evaporated. And then they can be changed, their balance. Okay? When they maintain their phase, liquid or metal, maybe they will not, though there is no change of balance, only your sample can be evaporated, the balance can change. So based on the melting temp and gassing temperature change the, among these groups, polyester first evaporated. Okay? And then styrene, and then fiberglass, around 70 degrees, and then carbon, calcium carbonate, they never evaporate around this 1,000 degree. So we, we can know 50% of this material have calcium carbonate, and around 20% fiberglass, 10% styrene, 20% polyester. Okay? Now how do you know this is polyester? You know the composition, and then in the other reference paper, they already mentioned when this kind of curve change occur, depending on certain material. Okay, so let's say you combine three composition in one biomaterial, and then you want to confirm you can mix them homogeneously, and then this is really happen to your material. So after the TGA, I can confirm that as design. Our biomaterial have 50% calcium carbonate, 20% fiberglass, 10% stainless, 20% polyester, something like. Okay. And then this is the example. Yeah, you have nanoparticle in poly pure PMMA. So pure PMMA, let's see black dot go like this, because the pure PMMA they are evaporate around wholly around 400 degrees. This nanoparticle in organic, they never evaporate until 800. So if you range temperature around 0 and 800 degree, you can a little bit increase, 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 right? So this change is 2%. From the black to red one, and the black to green one, maybe 7% as a weight. So let's say, uh, Amar, so if you put steady nanoparticle in Germa, you, 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 you put some 5% of steady nanoparticle in Germa, but you should show this is correct or not. In the case, you should detect the TGA, and then as design, I put 5% weight of the steady in Germa, and this is confirmed by TGA. 5% is really incorporate. This is the basic knowledge, how we do. And then, at the same time, DTG also can be obtain, obtained by this TGA analysis because DTG, uh, they change as a per minute, they determine some weight percent change. Differential thermal gravity, so this kind of graph can be co-linked in this manner. So from this, this DTG, maybe this peak is can be referred to the guessing temperature of this PMA. Okay. Because in here, maybe here or here or here is not easy to determine which is the midpoint. When the DTG, you can know exactly the peak point, and then you you will know the things. Then the DTG is some kind of slope of this whole graph. So this around 400, 390, they have very, they have very stiff slope, 
and then they can be smooth. So you can gather this graph. So this is the example. So we are using TGA carry out in aluminum crucible with 5 mg mass sample for each polymer. And then the experimenter was carried out under nitrogen atmosphere, flow of 100 ml per minute from 24 to 7 degree at 10 degree per minute and heating rate. So the reason why I mentioned this one, when you determine the TGA, perfect TGA, you should know this information at least. Which kind of instrument, and what is your weight, what is the atmosphere, nitrogen or oxygen, what is the flow of the nitrogen, and what is your temperature range, and uh, how was the speed, okay? So most TGA experiments use an inert sample purge gas done so sample only react to temperature during the decomposition, not the oxygen. When you use oxygen as a purge gas, you may want to switch gas from the nitrogen to the oxygen during the experiment. Because normally, uh, this uh, purging gas is nitrogen. So let's imagine without this nitrogen purging, nitrogen atmosphere, your biomaterial bio can contact oxygen and they can be oxidized. What does it mean? They can weigh, weigh and they can gain the weight. Okay? But TGA, their value go up. This is not okay. This is not what I want to say. That is why with nitrogen atmosphere, you should detect the TGA. Okay? So this is some TGA. So this is some graphene oxide. And then this is a polyurethane only. And the polyurethane plus 8% graphene oxide. So graphene oxide uh, from this very unique something, they have this, this change continuously. Okay. So on the left, you will know the percentage from 0 to 100% minus, right? From the right, you will know the DSC, a DT, DT, DTC. So this slope can be converted in here like this. So maybe each this kind of point have their own meaning. But I did not study detail about the, this graphene oxide. So actually I want to confirm this NGO can be totally evaporated until 500 temperature. And then this only pre pro polyurethane, unfortunately, this totally melted where? 400. So and then this NGO have this kind of gradual temperature down, uh, gravity down. So for, we cannot measure one, we cannot measure exactly the NGO amount in this po polyurethane polymer. Maybe if you combine this and this, if this can be occurred. This major peak is from this uh, polyurethane polymer, and the other peak chain is from this NGO, like this. Okay. So, in TG analysis, NGO pure PU, NGO fiber conducted. So two weight loss event, like this event and this event. So sure, the NGO is incorporated fiber, but we can determine how much of the 8% NGO is incorporated here. As an indirect way, this NGO 8% polyurethane they have NGO from this one and two change. Okay. So this is this is an example when nanoparticle cannot melt it certain point. We can do like this. From this change of the weight, we can know the exact amount of nanoparticle. But here we cannot know exactly, but indirectly we can know. So let's say this is another example. TGA was performed tempered and then eight nine gram, this is gram of Gibson powder was used to measure. And this standard material, air to three, was used as counterpart. 
TGA will perform room temperature to 1000 degree and ascending rate of 5 degree per minute you know, nitrogen atmosphere okay. so let's see this material actually do not change their weight that much this is only 10% change 6.5 change in this 20 degree but not ever change in 1000 so what does it mean? And then this is some um, your uh, actually I weight 8.2 milligram at a time air to 3 left sample reference and then rate this one sampling 0.2 second they measure something like so to reveal the major reason for fast setting and anti-forming ability TGA for det detecting any polymeric additive and XPS analysis perform so I want to know any polymeric additive that can be evaporate during this temperature change but only a theoretical reduction of the weight due to dehydration of the hemihydrate pressure surface resulting in a weight observed sometimes this is some cement when the this cement they are exposed to high temperature they convert it to convert to the dehydration because this calcium sulfate and of half water they can be deconverted to the water and then the deconverted the water they can be evaporated like this so I expect certain biopolymer can be detected in the TGA but only theoretical dehydration can occur so this is the one of the way you can know the polymeric or water amount in your sample and for that you should remember the no absolutely this material can be exposed to moisture so before the TGA you should incubate your material in 37 degree oven or 40 or 50 degree oven to evaporate the moisture as much as possible and then you should deliver the sample to the operator that can accurately you can measure so this little bit change is from the moisture from the start to the this early time point is from the moisture okay because below the 100 a moisture can occur a lot Another example, you can measure the drug, drug loading amount. So in this paper, I made MSN, where the polysilic and particle, and then I adding silver some polymer, silver sulfidized polymer in here, and then I want to know how much of a silver sulfidized by polymer can be incorporated this MSN. So from the TGA, I want to know I can detect around 30% can be loaded as a weight percent in this AGMSN so 1 gram AGMSN they have 0.3 gram of AG okay so amount of AG at silver sulfatazine were measured using TGA and this is some there and then TGA thermography show approximately 30 weight percent lose during the temperature rise of contrast the pure sulfur design because already I checked this pure sulfur design is decomposed in this 600 degree and the only 70 weight percent of silver sulfur design can be decomposed by some up to 600 degree and then yeah AGST is something like that it's so because this silver sulfur design they can be decomposed to sulfur design and silver silver they never evaporated this decomposed this 600 degree only silver, silver sulfur design sulfur design they can be deconverted okay so I know the weight molecular weight of silver the molecular weight of the silver sulfur design and the base on the, this ratio silver and sulfur design and then this 30% I wanna I can calculate uh, as a combination of AGSD 
40-30% of loaded in this nanoparticle. Okay? So even when you incorporate certain some certain composition in this nanoparticle, maybe you want to know which can be decomposed and which will not be decomposed under certain limit of your temperature. Okay? So, preconditioning, well, how you dry your material and what is the weight or volume as a, when you relook it, and temperature range, speed, nitrogen protein, and need reference material as well, like AG2 or something like that. Somewhere I added... Ah, sorry, yeah. So, this is the last page, yeah, I write down here. As a counterpart material, KNO3, KCLO4, AG2SO4. You can measure as a reference material. Also, other conditioning also should be mentioned as a material method for DSC. And then TGM, similar. Okay. So, yeah, I speed up this electric conductivity very fast. So this is some electrical conductivity of your whole material. Insulator, semiconductor, and metallic. So most of your biological tissue can be categorized as semiconductor around this. 10 to minus 4, 10 to minus 2, gmm per meter. So skin, brain, heart, muscle, something like around here. Insulator, Teflon, polystyrene, polyethylene, glass, 10 to minus 10 power. Metallic, graphite, bismuth, iron, copper, 10 to 4. So your TCP, polystyrene, 10 to minus 15. And your biological tissue, 10 to minus 4 electrical conductivity. Severe change, right? So that is why we want to make this similar conductivity material for mimicking biological environment. So do you know why they mentioned metallic? Metallic? Because graphite is not uh, metallic. Yeah, yeah, they just no yeah, just generally, generally they this is some metallic metallic material. They have this high value. Yeah, I know graphite is not categorized as metallic. Yeah, just they want to highlight most of the metal, they have this conductivity. And then when you look at the polymer, so some polymer they have insulator, which means no conductivity. But most of the other silicon, indium, or gadolinium, or germanium, some, and then this kind of PP gamma, PP nipham, and P dot, this is some electrical conductivity by a polymer. So then when you encounter this polymer in the paper, you should think about, oh, the researcher want to highlight the electrical conductivity. So biomaterial engineering, polyanilane, polypyrrole, and then this P dot have been shown to pose adequate biocompatible and then active electrical conductivity, match the biological tissue. So that's why or uh, they want to make this kind of semiconductive biopolymer and then or more high conductive material. So for measuring electrical conductivity, what can we use? We have four point proof, sorry, PR of B and the LED measurement. So this is a basic five electrical conductive conductor, seawater. Seawater means also your media, also conductivity. Okay? Copper, steel, gold, silver. Insulator, glass, rubber, oil, diamond, diode. Like this. This is the same things. Diamond, quartz, polystyrene, glass. Your water like this. DW here, 10 to 7 power. Okay? But seawater, maybe around here. 10 or 100 gmm per centimeter. Okay? So if you measure your conductivity 
in the DW or in the media, in seawater, totally change. So in your body fluid, they always have electrical conductivity. But the substrate has the same conductivity. But when you material have no conductivity, what can occur? This is our basic question. Okay? So to mimic this biological environment, at least we have to implant semiconductive material in your body. Okay? So you can encounter conductivity gmm per centimeter and then also resistivity on per on multiply meter. So maybe there is some relationship. So what is the relationship between them? So uh, in summary, reciprocal of resistivity is conductivity. Convert resistivity. And then that you can get their conductivity. Any other resistivity, uh, they have high resistivity means high good insulator, which means conductivity less. Less con resistivity have more conductivity. Okay? Metal alloy, less conductivity, more conductivity. Ceramic, glass, something like So, yeah, this is the most important part to know the concept. So, this, this is a full pool machine. You have this sample. Okay, maybe I will show you this YouTube video first. So range current maximum voltage thickness so they change the current uh, they change the voltage and then they know the current from this voltage and current they can measure shoot resistance this is shoot resistance right and then you can know shoot resistance resistivity and conductivity so this video explain everything about this four point machine so let's see, on the left side, this is their basic, and the range is 20 milliampere. Okay? The target current. So you want to reach the current 15 milliampere. So this is a 15, right? Ampere, so milliampere is 15 here. And then to achieve the 50 milliampere, how much of the voltage we have to input? So, 0.05 voltage, something like. So this is some um, related to this uh, voltage increment, 0.02, this 0.02 increment, and then maximum voltage is 2 voltage. Okay? Repeat 25 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 25 times. So this machine, 4-point machine, they want to reach certain current, and then they measure how much of voltage 
should be applied and then this V and I you know V equal IR so you can know the resistance so this is some shoot resistance yeah this is not this is a real value real unit square meaning endless okay ohm per millimeter square, uh, per millimeter square is shoot resistance and then you if you uh, if you know the thickness of this material and this is some long side that shear shear side this area okay so you know the area of this your material and then you know the thickness from this area and the thickness and sometimes if you have uh, some round shape specimen you just determine the diameter because the rectangular long and short if you click circle maybe diameter occur and then you know the thickness and then this some um, their shoot resistance this is automatically obtained from this VIN IR. Okay? And then this sheet resistance multiply the thickness. And then you know the resistivity. This is some um, square minus one. So which means that per each thickness, how much you have resistivity. And then you can know this value. So this value multiply this thickness, meaning resistivity. And then when you convert this resistivity reciprocally, 분자 부분 바꾸면 this is conductivity. Okay. Okay. Let's see detail a little bit. So yeah, sheet resistivity, as I said before, this is a four-point machine. They have one, two, three, four. You have a sample here. Okay, one, two, three, four point. And then two is measure the voltage, two measure the current. As I told you, they change the chain and they want to reach the specific current, and then how much voltage can be applied. And then you know this V and I, okay? And then from this V and I, you know the resistance. So normally, the shield resistivity is not given directly from the resistant, resistance. So you know V I, and then so you calculate the, this resistivity, and then you should multiply correction factor, 4.53, which means uh, this is some their assumption over 40 millimeter diameter and then below thickness is 400 micrometer and then you can use 4.53 so normally this 4.53 can be applied in 4 point proof in our machine so if you change this diameter or thickness over the, this range you should change this correction factor okay so uh, v, in, v divided by current is ohm and then ohm multiplied correction factor is ohm per square which means sheet resistivity okay you know it and then the sheet resistivity this one multiplied by the thickness is can be converted to ohm meter this is a resistivity Resistivity is own value of certain material. Aluminum, they have own resistivity. Gold, they have own resistivity. But if you make some new material, the resistivity you cannot know. So you should can calculate resistivity based on sheet resistivity from the four point machine. Okay? So you can gather the value from the propane machine, sheet resistivity, and then you measure the thickness of your film, and then you can know the resistivity. Okay? And then, which procure of the resistivity? Reverse this resistivity. And then they can come out Gmen per meter. 
over some time, if you want to say gene per centimeter, you multiply 100. Because centimeter, 10 centimeter, 100 centimeter is 1 meter. You want to know? Sorry, maybe this is correct, right? Mm. Okay, so this is example. So let's say this is P9 palm, pi 9, pi 9 is as I said before, poly, maybe polystyrene plus pi 9 polymer, same kind of the polymer, and then you can see increase of conductivity, but really gmm per centimeter, milli gmm, milli means 100 times less. And then this, another material, which is used for neuroregeneration, 0.1 milli gmm per centimeter. If you can see, this gmm, this is gmm centimeter, so milli gmm is that, where is it? Around here, okay? So this is uh, also maybe similar with the biological tissue, but less than this pi ni or pp or gamma p dot something like. Okay, and then this material Dr. G make the value is g mm centimeter, and then 100. How much change? 100 and another 100. So 10,000 change. 10 sounds increase the conductivity. So we want to know this material is good for neuroregeneration or not. Yeah, with Wendy. So yeah, so this is a resistivity. You can obtain the resistivity from the sheet resistance multiply thickness. And you can get this resistivity. If you convert this resistivity to the conductivity, Okay, and the silver around this one, conductivity around this. Okay, as a last example. So let's say this is some resistivity, conductivity. Conductivity around two, sea water is four gmm per meter. Okay, as a centimeter, maybe. 0 0.45, 0 0.45 centimeter. Okay. And then drinking water like this, very low. Silicon, very low. So for, for make sure, I want to make some calculation. Okay, maybe for just in case. I have 2 multiply 10 to minus 8 resistivity. Okay, as ohm per meter, ohm meter, and then convert it to one and then Am I right? Right? So, this is our conductivity as gmm per meter. Okay, let's, this is some ohm per meter. So, if you see this one, when you convert this one like this, and then you can know, you can calculate this one. Okay? So actually, they mention resistivity, conductivity. You know the any anything when they show them either of them. Okay, today I finish this class at this moment. So next week, more detail about this resistivity one more time, and then I'm gonna share the TM preparation for biological tissue. Okay, thank you.